Hi, AP Chem students. This is a class video for February 22nd. I'll go through these equilibrium calculations today. And uh, these are the objectives. We should be able to calculate the equilibrium constant with, with uh, initial concentrations, as well as calculating equilibrium concentrations with the initial concentrations. All right, so um, today we introduced the rice table. So this problem starts out by giving you the initial concentrations of H2 and I2. You might recognize this reaction from the Q versus K lab. And you allow these, uh, these gases to reach equilibrium. And at equilibrium, you measure the amount of HI and you find that it's 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And the question is to calculate Kc. Okay, equilibrium constant in terms of concentrations for this reaction. So what we're going to use is something called a rice table. This stands for reaction initial change in equilibrium. We put the reaction on top. We get the initial concentrations from the problem. HI is zero initially. There is no HI in the container and they give us the equilibrium concentration of HI. Now it's a matter of filling in this change and then calculating what the equilibrium concentrations are. So here we can plug this in because we know what this concentration has to be. Then using stoichiometry, we get that we get half of the H2 and I2 based on the fact that the stoichiometry here is two to one. And now we can just subtract and get the equilibrium concentrations for H2 and I2. Once we have those concentrations, we can plug into the equilibrium constant and calculate a value for Kc. Remember that the concentrations in the equilibrium constant expression are the equilibrium values. So let's do another example here. In this example, we have another different reaction. And it says that the vessel is charged at 1000 K with SO3 gas at a partial pressure of 0.5 atmospheres. At equilibrium, they measure the SO3 partial pressure as 0.2 atm, and it asks you to calculate Kp. So we need to find the equilibrium pressures, and we can again use the rice table, but with partial pressures instead. So I'm gonna set up my rice table. Under R, I'll put my balanced reaction. I'd like to write out the whole reaction rather than just the substances because it gives us the stoichiometry. And then here in my initial line, my I, it we're given that we have 0.5 ATM. So I'm gonna fill that in right here. And then at equilibrium, the partial pressure of SO3 is 0.2 ATM. So that's information from the problem. The other thing we know is that these two initial concentrations are zero. They don't mention putting any of those products into the vessel. All right, so now let's figure out our change line. Well, we have 0.5 initially, 0.2 at equilibrium. So this must mean that we subtract off, we reacted away 0.3 atm of SO3. Now looking at the stoichiometry, we see that this is two to two or one to one. So the change over here, I remember, the reactants are reacting away, so the products have to increase. That's got to be 0.3, just like the 0.3 ATM that was reacted away. But be careful, the stoichiometry for the O2 is half of what the SO2 and the SO3 is. So this change is half of 0.3. And so that equals 0.15. ATM. So now we can just do our simple math here. 0 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.3 ATM. 0 plus 0 0.15 is 1.5 ATM. 
And now we we can go ahead and substitute into kp here. So kp, our expression would be the pressure of SO2 squared times the pressure of O2 over the pressure of SO3 squared. And we can just plug in chug and figure out what kp is. So I can see that um, I can put in my SO2, it's 0.3 squared, and my O2 is 0.15 divided by 0 0.2 squared. And uh, when we calculate that, there's our answer, 0.338. This is another example. Um, you can go through the slides and see the values that are put in. But now let's um, do a different type of equilibrium calculation. So here we're given initial concentrations. We're given one of the equilibrium concentrations. And then we can figure out the change line. OK, and then they ask us to calculate K. But what if we are given the initial concentrations and we're given K, but we're not given one of the equilibrium concentrations to figure out what the change is. What do we do in that case? We still use a rice table. However, now this situation, okay, they give us some initial concentrations. They give us KC. We're not finding KC now. The question is to find the equilibrium concentrations given that information. So we can plug in our initial concentrations, but since we don't know what the change is because we don't know the equilibrium concentrations, we just call it X. And X, of course, again, has to change stoichiometrically. So here, if we say that this is minus X and this is minus X, then the amount that, of HI that appears is plus two X because, and we should write it as the reaction here, because we can see that 1H2 plus 1H2 gives us 2HI. So here the change is 2X. So now we can go ahead and substitute into KC and put in our um, equilibrium concentrations and solve for X. In this case, this is a, you can get a square on both sides and solve for X. And then just be careful because X is not the answer. That's just a change for one, right? We need to go back and substitute in for our concentrations, right? Our concentration of H2 was 0.2 minus X. So here we need to put 0.2 minus 0.16 and solve for what the actual equilibrium values are, the equilibrium concentrations. A nice thing to do is you can go back and, and plug these equilibrium concentrations into KC and check if you get the equilibrium constant again. So um, you could, well, definitely there are situations where you might need to use the quadratic formula. And I'm going to go through one of these because, you know, in college general chemistry, they, they ask you to use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. But the AP Chem exam would never ask you to solve this. But nevertheless, I, I think it's, a, it's a, a useful exercise to go through. So I'm going to do one example. All right. And these are some basic steps for solving these equilibrium problems. You can read through that. Okay. So here again, we've got a one liter flask filled with one mole of H2 and two moles of I2, and they give you the equilibrium constant Kc at that particular temperature. And it says, what are the equilibrium concentrations of H2, I2, and HI in moles per liter? The equilibrium concentrations. All right, so we're gonna start off. Okay, first thing is we need concentrations. So my H2, right, is just a uh, concentration as moles over liters. So I take my moles, divide by my liters, I get one molar. 
for my H2. I can do the same for I2. We'll skip the simple math here. This would turn out to be 2.000 molar. All right, so I've got my initial concentrations here. I can put a little zero to indicate these are my initial concentrations. I will set up my rice table. Let me put my reaction here, H2 plus I2. It's an equilibrium with 2HI. All right, so let's look here. I'm going to put in 1.00 molar for my H2. This is 2.000 molar. This is zero initially. They don't say anything about putting in HI. All right, well, don't have anything about my equilibrium values or my change. So I'm going to just say this is minus x, this is minus x, and this is plus 2x. And I know it has to go to the right because there's this zero here. I can just calculate my equilibrium values. And now um, I need to put this into the Kc expression. Kc is equal to my Hi squared over my H2 over my I2. So now let's, let's plug in 2x squared over minus x, minus x here, okay, and that should equal my 50.5 for Kc. So now you can see, okay, we've got to solve this, you've got to do some algebra and solve this quadratic equation. So I can get here 4x squared on top, I'm going to FOIL this okay, and then move it over to the other side. Um, so I end up with 2 minus 3x plus x squared. I moved it to the other side. And so I can do some algebra and get my equation into a quadratic form. And that would end up as 46.5 x squared minus 151.5x plus 101 equals zero. All right, so at this point we have it in the quadratic form. We now just need to, um, you know, solve this using the quadratic formula. If your graphing calculator has a solver, you can just put in a, b, and c. This is a, this is b, this is c. Okay, the quadratic formula is minus b, so that would become plus 151.5, plus or minus b squared, minus 4a times c, 101, okay, all over 2 times a. All right, so that's that's my quadratic formula. So when I solve, I get two roots, right? You get the plus root and the minus root. So my x here, I get two values, 2.32, um, and this is going to be molar, okay? Or x equals 0 0.935 molar. Only one of these roots is going to make physical sense. So if you look up here, this uh, one minus X, well, guess what? If you subtract off 2.32 from one, you end up with a negative concentration. That That's just a no-no, just impossible. So that's not our root. This is our answer right here. Okay, and now we can go and plug into our equilibrium line, right, our H2 was equal to 1.000 minus 0.935. So we get an equilibrium concentration of 0 0.065 molar. We do the same thing with I2, 
2.00 minus 0 0.935, get 1.065 molar. And then my HI is equal to 2 times X. And so we get a value of 1.87 molar for the HI. And that those are our equilibrium concentrations and what we needed to find in this problem. So like I said, though, AP exam will never ask you to solve a quadratic equation. In college, if you take chemistry again, you will have to solve it. But the AP chem exam will never ask you to solve it. The quadratic formula is not on the equation sheet. So, um, you know, I, I did that as a instructive exercise. I think it's worth doing at least once or twice. All right. But on the AP chem exam, you get questions like this. This is a old uh, AP chem um, question. And here we have the compound butane, C4H10. They love to use these organic compounds. In organic terms, it says occurs in two isomeric forms, N-butane and isobutane. So isobutane is um, basically if you take the carbons, uh, looks like this. It's got a branch. I'm missing a carbon here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think I got the right number of carbons now. And N-butane is just a long chain of carbon. So looks something like this. And I'm using kind of the abbreviated organic notation here. Okay, so these are two isomers of butane. And they say they're both gases and they exist in equilibrium at this temperature. And here's my case C. All right, and they say, suppose that a 0 0.010 mole, oh, maybe I said too many zeros. Suppose that a 0 0.010 mole sample of pure N-butane is placed in an evacuated one liter rigid container at 25 degrees C. Part A says, write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction above. Well, this is just asking for the equilibrium constant expression, right? It's just asking for this, but, this is where you should definitely get this point. This would be a one pointer and you definitely want to get that one point because it's going to be based right off of the reaction. We're going to put the products. Okay. The product isobutane over the concentration of N-butane and that's it. Nice point to get. Okay, next one says calculate the initial pressure in the container when N-butane is first introduced before the reaction. So if I look here, um, I'm putting in this many moles, okay, in one liter at 25. I think, aha, ideal gas law. All right, so my P is equal to NRT over V. So let me put my pressure, sorry, my moles in here, 0 0.01. I'm going to neglect my units. Feeling a little lazy here, 298, 1.0. Okay, and then when I solve this, I get a value of 0 0.25 ATM. Okay, here's my units. My units for this is liter ATM mole Kelvin. This is Kelvin. This is moles. See, I couldn't resist not putting in the units here. All right, and that's my pressure. All right, part C. N-butane reacts until equilibrium has been established. Calculate the total pressure in the container at equilibrium. Well, we don't know anything about the pressure at equilibrium. But if we look at this reaction, it's one N-butane molecule turns into one isobutane. For every one N-butane that we have, it turns into one isobutane molecule. 
So if we start out with 0.25 atmospheres of pressure from the molecules in there, even when they start reacting, we still end up with the same number of molecules. And if we have the same number of molecules, that's the same number of moles, we have the same pressure at equilibrium. It is still going to be 0.25 atm, right? And when they say justify your answer, that means you better put an explanation because that's going to be one point, right? If you don't put an explanation, you'll you'll lose that point. So we could say something like since each n butane molecule turns into one isobutane molecule, the number of molecules remains the same after reaction. which means the pressure is the same. Pressure is caused by molecules. If we have the same number of molecules, we're going to end up with the same pressure. Ideal gas law. All right. And then last part says calculate the molar concentration of each species at equilibrium. All right. So now we need the equilibrium concentrations. So we're going to use a rice table again. Okay, our reaction is our n-butane turning into in equilibrium with our isobutane. Initially, we've got to, and be careful about this, right? They want the molar concentration and our equilibrium constant is Kc, but we just did pressure, right? So just be careful, read carefully. This says molar concentration. So our molar concentration would be 0.1, right, over one liter. Our initial concentration of n-butane is 0 0.010 molar, okay, because we take our 0 0.01 moles over one liter. All right, so now our isobutane is zero, okay? We don't have any information about the equilibrium. Let's use X, nice, easy stoichiometry, one-to-one -one minus X, X. And now we're going to plug these values into Kc. So our Kc is equal to our product isobutane over our and butane concentration and we are given initially our our kc value at we're given our kc value at 25 degrees c 2.5 all right so now it's just a matter of doing some algebra okay so i can move my um, terms here over to the other side Okay, and I can collect my terms. I'll end up with 3.5x is equal to 0 0.025. can solve for x, and you'll get 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And this is equal to my isobutane concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so we got that one. Don't forget, we've got one more equilibrium concentration to find. So my n-butane is equal to 0 0.01 minus x, 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's equal to 0. 003 molar. Okay, so there's my other equilibrium concentration. Okay, so solve some nice equilibrium problems. I like these problems. They're fun to do. Um, 
And on the last slide, if you want more practice using the quadratic formula, actually you have a practice on your homework, but if you want more practice, here's another quadratic equation that you can solve using the quadratic formula and uh, using a rice table. All right, so that's the end and um, your homework is based off of this lesson and you should definitely check your answers for the homework with the answer key that's attached to the assignment. Uh, make sure you watch the videos or read the textbook pages for Le Chatelier's principle because we'll be diving right into those questions tomorrow.